<laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I have to send you a request. Okay, so we're gonna um, be recording. I'm already recording, and I have a guest on today, and she's gonna remain anonymous. But what she has is information from the human design perspective on the rave babies, and I've heard this from several of my clients, and this um, friend has graciously given us her time to make an introduction to what the rave babies are and what they're seeing for 2027. Um, it goes along with what I'm seeing in traditional astrology in terms of Pluto moving into Aquarius and several other planets moving into Aries, namely um, Neptune and Nessus and Saturn. But what's happening right now is um, there's a there's a program running and my guest is gonna talk about how this is a non-sentient program and that the new program that is about to run has nothing to do with the traditional human. Now the traditional human can be liberated from the program in general because it's not gonna be for us. And I find it very fascinating. I put a couple of posts from a link that I will try and put in the description but you know, there was some information in there that was just exactly like what I was coming up with that um, it's quote, the need for family, duty and other people will remain on a frequency that runs out in 2027. In 2027, we are entering an era when something dies from the ashes and something new emerges. We enter the deep dark, the darkness is coming and it's spreading among, among us. Um, that might sound very heavy and I'm gonna skip ahead to at 2027, all of a sudden it might feel like our time or their time is over and everyone will wake up early in the morning and feel that this time is over. But since everybody is moving from the mind and no one has the knowledge, of course, they'll think they just woke up in a bad mood. Six billion people waking up in fear, inexplicable, illogical feeling of shock. And from this human design perspective, um, we're also going to discuss these babies that I'm seeing. Some of them are public people, so I've shared those pictures. Um, and a lot of people in daycare have also sent me private pictures that I'm not willing to share. And the difference that I see in children is that they kind of don't need parents anymore. I'm, I'm seeing these children who are just being raised on a laptop and they don't have the kind of like loving regard for other humans that I, as a teacher, as a preschool teacher, um, as a farm to school teacher, I used to experience when I was around children. So my guest, I'm gonna call her M. What can you tell us about this program and what you're seeing with the Rave Babies? Yeah, so I want to um, back up what you said. First of all, what you see astrologically, okay? So um, with the discovery of Uranus in 1791, that triggered the shift from us being a seven-centered being to a nine-centered being, which completes in 2024. And um, uh, because Pluto is orchestrating this emergence and it completes the cycle of mutation on February 15th of 2027. So this has been um, ongoing. So this mutation has been going on and it will it will it will um, have its completion in 2027. So that's why we're calling them rave babies because um, Pluto will have um, will have completed its cycle and the mutation will be complete, right? So the mutation for us in human design is in the gate 55, and that's the gate of spirit, which is connected to the histidine codon, and some people think that histidine causes autism, but in human design, the guy who brought it, Ra, says that that's not true, that the reason we see autistics today is that basically those are children that have picked up the merged consciousness gene 
that are the that will be the structure of the raves, but they don't have the body to hold that consciousness. So they present as autistic. And so when we see the raves, we will see them as autistic, but they are not autistic, but they will look autistic to us. And um, when Neptune on February 14th of 2027, when it also completes its full cycle from its discovery date, um, they also say that the formula for death and resurrection is gonna change. So basically um, with death, we go from a 28 day bardo to a three day bardo. And with like resurrection or reincarnation, it's not really going to be happening anymore because there won't be enough bodies for people to come back into because there are so many people that are going to be not here on the planet because, as you just said, when February 15th rolls around and the door to the program shuts, it's like a door slamming shut. It's like it won't be there to support people anymore. And everything that we've been under, which is called the cross of planning, which we've been in since um, the 1600s from like 1610 until 2027 is the program that allows us to um, have like the human's era of its greatest accomplishment and wealth. It's mostly about wealth. Like if you look at third world countries and then you see like major cities like Taiwan, Singapore, Japan to compare, you can see how we've had so much money to build things and create technology. And with that are the structures of like, um, um, you have the energy for the details, for the community planning and the bargain. And this is what the cross of planning is. It's the creation of um, the UN, uh, UNICEF, charities, uh, institutions, uh, social security, welfare, everything that supports a society. And the people who are born into it, who want to work and contribute and all of that, that is absolutely going away in 2027 when we go into the cross, it's called the cross of the sleeping Phoenix. And that door slams shut. So why is it so chaotic is because you're beginning to see right now how everything is falling apart. If you look around, everything is beginning to collapse. You're seeing um, you know, supply chain issues. Everything that we see now is the beginning uh, sequences of this new um, cycle, this new program that's coming that doesn't support this anymore. So it is going to be shocking for some that are not prepared when they wake up and suddenly everything feels different and there's no longer a support system in place. And that is just ending. And the program is not a sentient program. Ra always said, it's just a program. It is what it is. And it's here to keep supporting consciousness in a way. And the new consciousness are, is going to be the rapes. It's not human beings. They call them um, uh, humans in transitus. And the raves are a whole new species. They're not like us. They're going to be very different than, than us. And um, so they will appear as autistic. Um, Ra said that um, parents will not know what to do with them because they're going to be so different and potentially problematic as babies where we're gonna to want to institutionalize them. And once they are around others that are like them is where they will form inseparable bonds and they will function as a merged consciousness. So when five of them are together or more, they form what's called a penta. And that's when the consciousness ignites in them and they will look at us the way we look at chimpanzees. 
their intelligence is in a different dimension than ours. They will communicate very little because um, they're telepathic, they're merged consciousness, they're as one. And um, they're going to be, yeah, just very different from us and basically have nothing to do with us. So whatever humans remain, they remain as separate. So the two don't mix together. It's not like we're going to live in communities with them. They'll be living in their own community and we'll be living in our own. However, they will need us to reproduce because they will not be able to reproduce anymore. So they still need us to reproduce. And we have been carrying the mutation and will continue to be making raves, but there will be children that are born that are human as well. So it's not like every single child born after 2027 is a rave. Many of them will be raves and there will be some that will, um, that will not uh, be raves at all. So this is what I'm seeing. Uh, when I was kind of tuning into this the last week or so since you and I just discussed having this conversation. Mm -hmm. I was tuning in that they would have a hive mind. So mm -hmm. what, what you're saying is that they will form a penta of five or more, and they will understand each other telepathically. Mm -hmm. And they won't necessarily have a need for parents and social relations. But what you're saying is that some of us here who hold this mutation will be like the surrogate parents to this rave generation. Um, and wh when I'm thinking about what I've seen since, say like 2003, when I was um, still working in like elementary education and farm to school type of learning is that the children were not interested in the woods. They weren't interested in where their food came from. They were not interested in farm animals. And when I read the description that I'm hoping to be able to put, um, you know, in, in this conversation on YouTube and Vimeo, mm -hmm. they won't necessarily relate to animals. And I found it very interesting that animals would be kind of afraid of them because I'm hearing from the animal communicators Mm -hmm. that horses will no longer be here, that a lot of animals that are dying right now because of the change in micro waves and frequencies mm -hmm. cannot actually be in the next program and that dogs will, you know, which, you know, our scrappy little dogs are kind of our best friends right now. Dogs will be afraid of these children. So what are you thinking about that stuff in terms of them being a species that don't also relate to nature and animals. What's What are your thoughts there? Well, that's interesting because under the, under the cross of the sleeping phoenix, as the door closes on everything, it also is changing. It closes the relationship that humans have to animals. The bargain, it's called like a bargain, right? Because we're under a bargain. You know, I feed you, you're loyal to me that ends. And so animals will no longer have an interest in humans at all. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the raves, it's us. The whole thing is changing where our relationship with animals is going to change because they no longer are going to be interested in the bargain with us. So Basically, I don't know. I mean, that could mean that your dogs don't want to listen to you and they want to run away. You know, <laughs> your cats may not be interested. It, I, I, I find that um, it makes sense in a way. So if the bargain is changing, then the raves have no, I, they have no need to have a relationship with animals because their diet, they're, they're naturally not going to eat meat they're vegetarians. So I think that their relationship to animals won't be the same as ours since, you know, we still consume and that's going to shift. So I don't know that the animals would be afraid of them. I think that they would just be skittish because they're going to be skittish with all of us. Yeah, that's so fascinating. Um, 
And that's been my experience too. I, I noticed when I was uh, working for the Lucy McKenzie Humane Society um, and I was in schools trying to show proper, you know, like understanding of your dog or your cat so that they all didn't end up in the Humane Society. For years, I did this work and I thought, this is so interesting. Like the children who would come to the horse barn where I was also teaching riding and, you know, camps for children to ride horses, they would come with their phone and say that they had an app and a game so that they knew how to groom that horse and put on its halter and pick up its feet and clean its feet. And then when they were actually presented with the physical horse, mm -hmm. the actual physical horse, like standing in the barn, they did, they did not relate to it. They only related to the horse on the screen, like on their little game technology. So do you, do you feel like, how are these kids going to spend their time then? Are they going to mostly live in like virtual reality, like gaming world, or what are they going to do? Well, it's, you know, um, that is an unknown. Ron never talked about that, but I did see um, in one of the human design um, po uh, uh, groups on Facebook, there's a guy who uh, I guess he has, um, you know, some maybe psychic ability and does OBE. And he had an OBE years ago before he knew about human design. And now that he's re-looking at that experience, because I chatted with him about it, he realizes that what he saw were the raves. So he went into the future and he said he saw a very kind of more bleak world. Um, he couldn't tell whether it was disease or bombings that, you know, collapsed everything. Uh, buildings were being used as like um, greenhouses to grow vegetables for these groups of people. And a lot of them lived in like cellars and they were very different. He described them as, you know, having really kind of dark eyes and telepathic. Some of them were on, um, they were sitting in front of like a TV. So it seemed like electricity was still functioning and maybe even, I don't know about the internet, but they were, <laughs> they were communicating with each other via the screen. So mm -hmm. nonverbal communication on the screen and one of them was outside and saw him and wasn't welcoming, but wasn't like, go away. And they saw another person approaching and telepathically made some hand signals, didn't utter a word and the person walked away. And basically that person let him know that that person was not welcome in the group. They were living in communes of like 50 and they had psychics or mediums they were heavily heavily um interested and in needing mediums in their group and the mediums lived separately from them and spent most of their time kind of looking into the future um for them so maybe some of them will be um tech oriented or maybe not because they are, um, what Ra did say is they're not going to want to have anything to do with the world as the way it is. They're not going to want to work. They're not going to want to participate with the structure of the world and our society the way it is now. And with what's coming, it's going to completely collapse. So it's going to be a whole, it's going to be survival. I mean, that's why you have your strategy and authority. That's why Raw said the voice spoke to him and gave human design for humans, not for raves, because raves are here to develop emotional intelligence. Whereas we have developed the mind, we need to learn how to survive in the coming times. And that's that that's why it's so important that you know what your strategy and authority is, because it's the only thing you're going to be able to rely on. So I don't know. It sounds like a very kind of dystopic kind of world in a way, right? And so who knows how these kids are going to be functioning or it doesn't look like they're creating anything. It just looks like they're developing emotional intelligence for some kind of, for me, my thought is it's conscious evolution 
because if you like follow Steiner or anybody else who says that we have an end date and human design says we only have 1300 years left and then we're supposed to evolve where we move on to another planet like supposedly Jupiter, then maybe they're just existing and developing, but for a different type of evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I think about the human experience mm -hmm. um and it, again everything that i say is my take on it and everyone should do their own research and certainly have their own take on it but the original experience of the human was the greatest beings through the multiverse added their dna to this beautiful very complex, highly emotional, heart-centered being that was experiencing a paradise planet in a way that we lived with the plants and animals and we experienced deep compassion for one another as families. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing ar around with, uh, you know, quite a bit of grief around the loss of family um, from what event just transpired where a lot of nuclear families broke up and people were fired from jobs. People even got divorced. Families were not coming together. Um, children don't talk to their parents anymore. And I saw this and I felt like a deep sense of grief that we were not these nuclear families while we're being threatened with nuclear war, like Armageddon. But I also have a sense of extreme, like, like we did it, like we did this fabulous experiment of being the most heart-centered, compassionate beings mm -hmm. that, that we had this full experience. And I remember, you know, farming and doing a lot of things and hearing on a psychic level, why am I doing this? Like, why am I raising sheep right now? Why am I shearing sheep? Why am I teaching my children how to um, card the wool and spin the wool and then weave a rug. Like, why am I teaching them these hands-on heart-based things, which Steiner, um, my children went to the Waldorf school, which Steiner was heavily into like the hands and the heart and the mind all together was this human experience. And I almost feel like we now, we have mastered everything that this program could possibly be for us. And I'm not interested in being a rave. So instead of me having grief, I feel like we have an exit point and we were extremely successful. And that's how I'm taking this right now. I think you're right because that's absolutely right. Because, you know, we are a, um, a group of people that definitely were very, very earth centered and connected to the earth and um, in touch with like the nature spirits and um, spirits of land and, and all of that. And it's coming, we were very successful and we reached a pinnacle, I agree with you. And it is coming to an end and um, Who knows? I mean, I do think that here's two things. There is an exit point, right? For us, like people like you and I, and perhaps with the less bodies able to come back and reincarnate, we don't have to come back and we get to go maybe someplace else, right? And then for those that, and if you live through this, your exit is the beauty of it is even though it's super frightening, like to think about, holy shit, how am I going to do survival in a chaotic world? The underside of it is that the program doesn't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And so you can be liberated from the program. This is your liberation from the program. It's why you, if you know your strategy and authority and you live it, you're out of the program, man, because you're like, I don't have to do banking. I don't have to do any of this nonsense anymore. I don't have to be the rat on the wheel spinning like that. 
I'm free from that. You know, you can be free from it. In a way, it's a huge liberation. There are people who view what's coming in a frightening way. And there are some people that I know in the human design community that just can't wait. They're like, yeah, man, liberation, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're out of this. We're not the program anymore. It doesn't want to have anything to do with us, which means it's not going to affect you. Wow, Em. So that, I mean, because this really helps my clients um, who feel like they have apathy for the program, like they're a failure or they're a disappointment because they just can't do this program anymore. And so, I mean, this is so fabulous because it's just like turning it around going, no, you're, you're a success. You did the program and the program is done and you don't have to play that matrix game anymore. So you should be like happy to be liberated from this thing. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you know, I get, I have my days where I'm like, damn it, I'm not playing hunger games. You know, I am not going to play hunger games. I am not shooting someone in the face for food. If they're showing up at my house, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I got to, I got to see it the way it was and it's in in my connection with the way things are beautiful about nature and things like that and and you know who knows uh, you know on on to something next you know for me it's like okay this this game is over on to the another on to another one mm. wow that's beautiful i mean that that really helps um because i the, during this period since you and i first booked our our session together where we were going to have this talk. I went through a lot of grief about being a failure as a mother. And I, I also have had a lot of grief about like not being able to successfully teach permaculture, mm -hmm. <laughs> different, different things like that. And I also had expressed like that it's very hard to sell my property because it's a large property with a lot of forest and woods and trees and People don't seem to want nature. They will just, they just come in the house and say, you know, why don't you have a smart TV? Where's your smart dishwasher? How, how fast is your internet? Like, it's almost like humanity is on to the next anyways. They're not overly interested in sitting on a stone wall in the forest for hours and just listening to the brook. You know, and I was kind of in grief about that. And I feel like the whales and the horses and the dogs and all of these creatures, that the chickens and things that also are liberated from this program, they're not crying. They must be excited to go on to the next two. I bet. Um, I hear you. I feel the same way. And when we, you're... <laughs> The weird thing is that you're successful in that you brought another human in. About what, how our children behave is, you know, going to be their own. I mean, for me, the most important thing for me, I have two children, is um, teaching them their strategy and authority, understanding that there's a program running and what is the program that's running and what is it trying to tell you to do and how do you live your life correctly and not get conditioned by the program so that you, under, you know what to do when the time comes. And as far as your property goes, Lolita, Honey, no, somebody may not be interested in it now, but when the shit hits the fan in 2027, oh my God, are people going to go flocking and running because they say that a lot of people in the cities are going to like panic, completely panic because that world especially is going to fall apart. I mean, Raw said, come 2027, you're going to wake up and there'll be no police to call there'll be no food on the shelves, there'll be no hospitals, there'll be no doctors, there will be nothing. You will wake up and you will understand that you are completely on your own. Hmm. Yeah, that's so fascinating. So, <laughs> oh my God. So it's liberating and in a way it's kind of frightening. Sometimes, you know, I'm going around the house and I'm doing stuff and I'm like, oh, wow. What would it be like to know that there's no one to call, nothing, nothing, and it's just you? So, 
And then, you know, I had a little preview of that experience because the um, flooding that happened here in Vermont this summer from kind of May through September took out a lot of the infrastructure, the bridges, um, the phones were down. So even if you were having an emergency, you couldn't yeah. call anyone. And it was a very, sen uh, like a sense of silence, um, a little bit of loneliness, but I also had this deep feeling like, look, if my house goes down the river, it goes down the river. Like there was this sense of like, no matter what happened, it was okay at this point. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I totally get it. Like it's this, yes. That's why he said strategy and authority is the most essential thing to know because you can prep to kingdom come. And if suddenly you are sacral, let's say you're a generator and you're sacral defined and sacral is your authority. And someone says to you, do you need to leave? And you're like, yeah, you go. And yeah. you leave behind everything, you know? It, you don't you don't know what's going to unfold and so the only way that you're going to make it is is your self-reliance and your inner knowing can i trust this person hmm. and i trust what's in front of me yeah right and in my last video i explained and i'm gonna we only have a minute left in this session but i'm gonna explain a little bit more about the voice to skull technology and the microwaves and the different things that are affecting the human mind right now yeah. so that you really should only be looking to your own heart, be very light, um, do not worry about any of the humiliation programs that are also playing right now, your spirit is beautiful. And we did this program and we did it very well. And many of us, are going to exit now and on to the next. So I want to thank you, Em. We have just a, a minute left. Do you feel like there's anything else that we need to let people know right now? I mean, the only thing that I would really say is, you know, go to one of the sites like Jovian Archive and do your human design and look at what your inner authority is so that you learn how you have time, right? You have a little bit of time to decondition so that you are like good with yourself, that you understand yourself because it's the only thing that we should be relying on is just yourself. Yourself, rely on yourself. Beautiful. Only you. Mm -hmm. Only you. Okay. Only you. Excellent. <laughs> um, thank you so much for taking oh. this. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was fun. Thank you, Lolita. All right. Bye-bye <laughs> for now. Okay, bye-bye for now.